Right, we're back live with you tonight here on In Focus. Before we look at the impact of the Palapala report on public confidence, we discuss political accountability with Mkulego Sheng of the IFP, who is also the chairperson of the Public Accounts Watchdog uh, Scope. Mkulego, good evening, and thank you very much for your time and joining us uh, tonight uh, here on In Focus. Thank you, Ashton Tabu. Good evening to you and the viewers of News in Africa. To borrow the words of the, the, the panel, in the context of the... Uh, scheme of uh, the removal of the president from uh, office. Uh, what is the consideration uh, currently within the, the IFP on the outcomes uh, of this report? Thank you, Raj. We would first and foremost want to congratulate and thank the panel for it all well done, for moving with the necessary speed and urgency to deal with the matter, and particularly thank um, retired Chief Justice Sandy Lenob. And as you know, um, political parties made nominations um, to the speaker for members of the panel, and uh, retired Chief Justice Nobu was our nomination. In fact, the IFP is the only party that nominated him. And we think that he has led this um, you know, responsibility with the necessary um, discipline and necessary the outlook which it requires to ensure that they bring it to a speedy uh, conclusion so that it can go to its next phase. This morning, the IFP Parliamentary Caucus met having studied the um, report, the panel report, and having looked at all the other accompanying documentation. And we agree with the panel. We could not have arrived at any other conclusion and determination than the one that it did. What now it follows is what must happen on Tuesday. The IFP will be voting in favor and in support of the report and in favor and in support of the constitution um, of a impeachment committee so that the prima facie evidence that the president now has to answer for is tested and is taken forward um, so that this matter um, you know, is concluded within the parameters um, of the law, the constitution and due parliamentary uh, processes. We think that the president uh, must answer the questions and he must face um, the full might of parliamentary oversight and accountability, and that the findings of the panel, the Section 89 panel, are actually justified, and that the prima facie evidence is compelling against um, the president. Yeah. The, the, the panel re uh, is review evolve, revolving on two issues. One, the source of the foreign currency, but two, uh, the instruction that has been given uh, to the protection unit uh, of, of the president uh, to investigate this matter. Why do you think the president failed to answer on those two things? Well, it emerges um, that there is no case number insofar as the reporting is concerned that um, the Palapala farm is within the jurisdiction of the Bella Bella police station. There's no case number there. There's also the issues touching on the Namibian involvement, including but not limited to contact and engagements with the president of Namibia, and that on its own calls that uh, things into question. The fact that there was money received in that it was not taken to a bank, that um, this is foreign currency uh, which came into the country um, with an generally and specifically an unknown individual other than him being named in the manner that he was. But beyond that, what is fundamentally um, clear here is that the president did not manage his transition from um, business to politics in a manner uh, which safeguarded himself as the president. You recall he was in politics, he went into business. But when he came back, he seemingly now um, placed himself with one foot in politics and one foot in business. And that has muddied the waters and has landed him in the kind of trouble uh, which he is in now. And so it takes us back to how the declaration of interest was done, um, in fact, uh, when he assumed the office um, of deputy president and the declaration that um, he made to parliament as a member of parliament. But obviously all those issues and factors combined 
are going to be elements that are going to be ventilated um, in the um, impeachment committee. I must hasten to say uh, that it is incumbent on Parliament at this point uh, to respond positively to the work of its own panel. Uh, because this panel was constituted at the behest of a parliamentary resolution and they have made findings which require action. Therefore, the fact that uh, on Tuesday uh, the heightened speculation about how the vote, the vote should carry is in itself very problematic. It's basic elementary uh, parliamentary procedure and democratic discipline to the dictates of the Constitution. Uh, that the next step of this is that an impeachment committee must be assembled and take this matter forward. One thing that has emerged from the other opposition party, the, the main opposition party being Democratic Alliance, is that they will uh, be putting a motion to invoke a section uh, 50, uh, subsection 1. Will you, as the IFP, vote to uh, support and adopt that particular resolution to dissolve uh, the current, uh, 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 what do you call it, the, the, the current assembly? No, but why should we dissolve ourselves when we've done nothing wrong? There's only one man in the dock here, and that's the president. And he is finding himself in the dock at this point precisely because the very parliament that the DA once dissolved did its job by invoking Section 89 and adhering to the processes thereof. And the report is now before us. So if we dissolve parliament, it effectively means that the president will not face accountability. I think that it's very premature, um, reckless and irresponsible, in fact, to, to actually want to complicate things with that kind of motion, but also at the same time to deflect attention from the major primary issue, which is confronting parliament and the country at this point in time, which is a president who has to account. So it is certainly not coherent as a, a, a plan as to why Parliament um, should be uh, dissolved uh, at this point in time. I mean, let me hasten to say, if Parliament was dissolved now, the IFP stands to benefit. We are on an upwards growth um, trajectory, um, and we are doing very well, even in the by-elections that have had yesterday in World Natal, for example, of the five we took three, taking one word of the ANC. So at an opportunistic level, yes, we could support it, but this is not about that. This is about the principle and the um, constitutional and democratic consideration of putting country first. The president must not be given a way out of this of facing accountability. And the DA motion um, seeks to do exactly that. There is nothing currently which seeks to suggest that parliament has conducted its business outside the parameter of the law and will wait for Tuesday. Um, on these matters. So the IP will not be supporting the um, DA motion. It's premature, unnecessary, and seeks to place an indictment on Parliament where none exists, um, actually, and only they can explain why they would actually do something which is so incoherent, uh, illogical, rational, irrational, and just one which seeks to give the president a way out. IFP Member of Parliament, Mkulia Gotlen, appreciate your time. Thanks so much uh, for coming on that.